Hello, this is Daniel Chiro. Uh, I'm back with another lesson. And this time around, we want to look at the limbs, the joints, and the muscles of um, a grasshopper. Remember that a grasshopper uh, has a type of skeleton which we call the exoskeleton. We looked at the three types of skeletons the endoskeleton, the exoskeleton, and the hydrostatic skeleton. So the grasshopper is an insect and it has an exoskeleton. So we want to look at the limbs of a grasshopper, the joints that exist, and also the muscles uh, that uh, actually form part of the joint as well. Before I go further, I want to remind you that if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel and you are watching me from my YouTube channel, please uh, click the subscribe button. Uh, that way you will be able to get notifications each time I upload a new video. To begin with, I want us to look at the first part which we are calling the leaves. So, a grasshopper has limbs just like many other organisms. So, the limbs of a grasshopper are of two types. We have the first one we call the wings. So, number one are the wings. And the second type we call the legs. So, these are what we call limbs. These limbs, they perform a function, and the main function is for locomotion. So the limbs in a grasshopper are used for locomotion. Now, let's look at the different ways in which these limbs are used. Let's begin by looking at the wings. So the wings are used for flying. The wings are used for flying. While the legs are used for two purposes. The first one being for walking. And the second one being for jumping. So those are the two uh, functions of, of the legs. So the wings are used for flying, the legs are used for walking and also for jumping or hopping. So you will be able to see that the structure of these limbs actually enable them to do these functions that we have uh, talked about. So let's look at uh, the wings. You should be able to understand that uh, wings exist in pairs. So the, the, the grasshopper has two pairs of wings. So these, there are two pairs. And both pairs are used for flying. So they actually enable the grasshopper to float in the air. So apart from the two pairs of the wings, you have also three pairs of legs. So these are three pairs of legs. We have the first pair, which we call the four legs. So these are called four legs. Then the second pair, now before we can even look at the second pair, the first pair of legs are those legs which are found near the head. So very close to the head, but not on the head. Those are what we call the four legs. Then the second pair, these are a pair of legs just behind the four legs. And these legs are called the mid legs. They are called the mid legs. 
Then the third pair, these actually are behind and they appear larger. These are called the hind legs. So those are the three pairs of legs. These legs perform slightly different functions. So when we look at the four legs and the mid legs, these two actually perform a function of walking. As you can see in the video that the grasshopper is walking and when it is walking, observe the four legs and the mid legs are the ones that it is using for walking. Then the hind legs, these are used for hopping and jumping. Hopping and jumping is actually a task that requires greater force to propel the organism forward. So you will be able to note that these legs appear larger because they have a, a, a strong muscles in them, which we are going to look at when we look at the, the joint. I want now to take you through um, the, the way these limbs are attached to the body of a grasshopper. Now you should remember that a grasshopper, being an insect, it has three body parts. And these body parts we have So the three body parts, the first one being the head, then the second one being the thorax, and the third one being the abdomen. So these are the three body parts. As you can see in the image uh, that is showing on your screen right now. So, the limbs which we talked about, the four limbs, the mid legs, the hind legs, including the wings which we talked about earlier, they are not attached to the head, they are not attached to the abdomen, but all of them are attached to the thorax. So the limbs are attached to the thorax. You can see from the image that all the limbs, when you look at the wings, they are attached to the thorax. All the three pairs of legs are also attached to the thorax. Now we want to look at the joints that are in the limbs of a grasshopper. So the second part, the joints. You should understand what a joint is. A joint is simply a structure on the body of an organism where the parts of the skeleton actually are fitted together. A joint is a structure on the body of an organism where the parts, different parts of a skeleton are fitted together, meaning that this part and that part will actually meet at one point and that is what we call a joint. So now you should understand that the, both the wings and the legs in a grasshopper are actually linked to the body by what we call a joint. So limbs are connected to the body of a grasshopper. By joints. Now, you should remember that the exoskeleton of a grasshopper has different parts. Some of the parts we talked about, we have a layer we call the epicuticle, we have the exocuticle, and the endocuticle. The epicuticle and the exocuticle, these are structures that are rigid. They are rigid. Uh, they are made of chitin and they are rigid structures. 
the endocuticle is a flexible material. It can easily bend. It's not rigid. So, at the joint, in the limbs of a grasshopper, you will not be able to find the epicuticle and the exocuticle because these are rigid structures. If they are present on the joint, it means that it is difficult for movement to take place. So, to ensure that there is movement at a joint, the joint only has the endocuticle and muscles attached there. So we have only endocuticle is present at the joint together with muscles. Each joint is only able to move in one direction. Uh, I'm sure uh, you are seeing as the grasshopper is walking uh, on, the, on your screen, you should be able to see that the way the joints are bent, they are actually able to move in a particular direction. So there is only one direction in which they are able to move. So each joint can only move in one direction. Each joint can only move in one direction. But you will be able to find that the, each of those joints, they are also bending in different directions. So the bending is actually in different directions. You have those that are bending downwards, and you have those that are bending upwards. Okay, so this actually gives the movement in different directions of the grasshopper. So each joint bends in a different direction. And that gives a wide range of movements, movements in different directions of a grasshopper. So now I want to take you through the what will bring about this movement. It is not only the exoskeleton part, but you also talk about the muscles. How are the muscles attached at a joint to bring about the, the movement? So the next part I'm going to talk about the muscles in the joint. Okay, so now let us look at the third part, which we are calling the muscles of the grasshopper. The muscles in limbs of a grasshopper, they are actually on the inside of the cuticle of the exoskeleton. So on the inside of the cuticle of the exoskeleton. Remember, we said that the exoskeleton it's a type of skeleton which is found outside the body of an organism while the muscles are found inside. So the muscles that are found at a joint in the uh, limbs of grasshoppers are actually on the inside of the cuticle of this exoskeleton. And these muscles at a joint, they work in pairs. And this pair of muscles actually, they work in different directions and we say that they are antagonistic muscles. They are antagonistic muscles. What does that mean when we say antagonistic muscles? It means that when one muscle contracts, then the other one is made to relax. That is antagonism. So this is how they work. So there are two muscles at a joint. One muscle is called the extensor. 
and the other muscle is called the flexor. So, if you have a joint, the flexor is a muscle that will cause the limb to get flexed. The extensor is the one that is going to cause the limb to be extended, to straighten. The word extensor here means to be able to straighten that limb. The flexor simply means to bend the limb. So this one, straightening. So when an extensor muscle contracts, then the limb becomes straightened. When the flexor muscle contracts, the limb actually is bent. So bending of limb. That is how they work. So the contraction of the flexor muscle causes the limb to bend. The contraction of the extensor muscle causes straightening of that particular limb. The, the last part I want to talk about is, remember at the beginning of the lesson, I did indicate that the limbs, the three pairs of legs in a grasshopper, they are actually of different sizes. You are going to find that the four legs and the mid legs they are smaller, while the hip legs are actually much larger. So you should understand that the hip legs, they have muscle which is strong. It is large muscle and this muscle is strong. What is the purpose of having a large muscle? The large muscle which is strong is important in the kind of movement the grasshopper is going to make. What kind of movement does it make using these large limbs? The kind of movement they make is actually jumping and hopping. And that requires greater force for it to be pushed forward. So that is why you find that the limbs are actually larger, uh, the hind limbs are actually larger than any other limb on the grasshopper. Well, we've come to the end of the lesson. Uh, I'll see you next time.